Welcome back to DM Gives Inspiration Season 8, Episode 4, where we're going to talk about big events, crowds, wars, invasions. It's a very cool and seductive idea to have your players surrounded by people, but these people are under your control. So how do you manage that many NPCs at once? Well, the truth is, you can't. Video games, even today, have not answered that question. Oftentimes, the crowds are all the same people wearing the same hats. Over the years, video games have built a language with their audience. Exclamation points, question marks, over NPCs' heads that signify that that's who we should talk to. If there is a randomly generated mission, that NPC we're meant to follow, pick up, maybe in a game like Assassin's Creed, isn't actually interactive. As soon as the quest is completed, they disappear. And you might see that exact NPC wandering around the town later, but we've learned that that person is not going to remember that event where we saved their lives or stole their car. Sometimes it's even more apparent that we won't be interacting with those NPCs, like in fighting games. At no point is the game going to pause so we can interact with that guy cheering in the background of Street Fighter. But in D&D, we feel like it should be different. That the world is living and breathing and any of these NPCs should have character. So you might feel pressured to come up with a hundred names. Come up with as many voices that you can do. All to satisfy your players' interactions in this crowd. But the crowd, the masses, the mob are all one entity. And if you treat them as such, as one character, you're going to have a much easier time. Here's a situation that always comes up for new DMs. They want to run a goblin invasion of a town. The buildings are on fire. The goblins are moving through the streets. People are running everywhere in a panic. So the DM sets up a map of a town. They fill it with goblin miniatures, and then they grab a bunch of NPC tokens and spread them all around. They go to their initiative tracker and add crowd to the initiative. And every time they get to that crowd, they sit there and move one token and move another and move another to simulate that crowd moving around. But by turn three, you start to realize this kind of sucks and takes way too much time. You've got seven goblins you're trying to manage. You have 20 faceless NPC civilian tokens running around in circles. You hope that the goblins attacking civilians would spur the players into heroics. But actually, your turns are just lasting way too long. And once the first faceless NPC falls, the players stop caring. The mission feels like it's already failed. What you actually need to do is downsize. Reduce and combine those NPCs until you're basically left with an avatar, a stand-in for what the crowd is. There's a great example of this in the 2012 movie, The Avengers. The actual crowd disperses very quickly. And what we're left with is one barista, one woman who is embodying the personality of the crowd. The camera follows her journey through the streets. How she looks out the window, and there's hope on her face when she sees the Avengers. We as the audience get to know that character. We want to protect that character because we've seen their face. We know where they work. A coffee shop. We know that they're noble. They try to save the people around them. This is repeated again in the 2015 movie Age of Ultron. Now with a mom and a kid, so a little more heartstrings being pulled for free there. Sometimes in movies, dogs are used to get the audience riled up about a crowd in danger. Like the 1996 movie Independence Day. We see a lot of faceless masses running through the streets. But when that dog is in peril, people really cared. So in that goblin scenario, pick out one NPC token to elevate to the status of character. They have a personality, and it should embody the world around them. If the town is full of halfling farmers, that particular character will be a halfling farmer. They will now showcase and embody everything that that halfling farmer society cares about. They're trying to save their rabbits. They're trying to stop the goblins from lighting the silos on fire. They are personifying the crowd. 
They have a unique voice. They have their own turn in the initiative order. But you still might want to simulate that mass of people. In which case, use bigger tokens. Instead of moving 14 individual tiny tokens, use a huge one and move them as a group, reducing the length of your own turn. Or you could also just make people difficult terrain. Everyone's trying to crowd into one building. That area is now difficult terrain. You just draw a kind of blob there on your map. If our halfling farmer enters that area, we can showcase how they are overcome by the crowd, how they are pushed around by the fearful masses. This is showcased in the 2008 Pixar movie, WALL-E. On board the Axiom, we only meet two passengers, but their experience embodies how all the passengers feel. If we were playing WALL-E the tabletop game, we would not move these NPCs independently in their hover chairs. We would instead make those areas dangerous as we, a tiny robot, attempt to navigate through the bustling streets of the Axiom. In the climax of that movie, we would not slide down each individual token as the ship tilts. You would instead have one large token inside of which is hidden the shoe that the players have to find. Maybe a little specific if you haven't watched Wally -E recently, but whether it's Avengers, 1939's Wizard of Oz, 1956's Ten Commandments, we meet individual characters who embody the crowd, and then we have massive crowd shots. You could even at that point remove the tokens entirely. Just talk about the crowd in the background, looking through windows, huddling in corners, trying to run away, as long as we have this NPC that communicates what the general populace is feeling in that goblin invasion what the halfling farmers want. Go back and watch some of these movies with big, big crowds of extras, like 1959's Ben-Hur, or 1994's Stargate, 1995's Braveheart. Notice how we keep returning to the same extras in the audience. They are embodying that experience for us. This is very plain in zombie movies, or TV shows like The Walking Dead. If you try to look at the background zombies, sometimes they're not even in makeup. But these hero zombies, the ones that are fully done up, are right there in the camera's face. And so our brains go, wow, look at that zombie. Look how messed up that zombie is. That whole crowd beyond them must all look that intense. Must be makeup to the same degree. You could use the same strategy if you wanted to do a war scene. It would be tempting for a new DM to just line up masses of tokens and slowly, over the course of turns, scrunch them all together. But Troy, and even Lord of the Rings, handles this really well. There are pockets where our heroes exist, where they battle the enemy heroes. And when they clash, everyone around gives them space, even stops to watch. What's happening in the background doesn't matter. So on your battle map, you could basically draw a circle and then put some crosses through everything else, symbolizing that that area is busy, occupied by other people. But in this center area, that's where our heroes are fighting as both armies look on and wonder. Of course, they continue to battle each other, but the real fight is being decided by these heroes. The outcome of the hero versus the goblin chieftain is more important than the heroes defeating 20 goblins. And now with the system in place, all orcs in Lord of the Rings can sound the exact same. We know what they look like under their helmets. We don't really need to put that much effort into working a crowd of orcs. Or an entire army of orcs. All those halflings in the village have the same voice, the same tone, and are very, very easy to roleplay. But our next goal is to create something for our players to do. Some goals. The quest, Defend the Town, is too generic. What does defending the town mean? When one NPC dies to the invasion, has that objective failed? We want to make things smaller. Defend the keep. Defend the king. Don't let them breach the final gate in Helm's Deep. But we can also add smaller objectives to that goblin invasion that makes the NPCs feel savable. An NPC is trapped under a burning log. They can be a faceless NPC, part of that crowd, but there's a chance that a player will run over to that log, 
make an athletics check and save them. You could have a barn with horses. And if somebody goes over and opens the door, the horses are free. But these are all just side quests. The main objective is not at risk. And they're as faceless as the crowds. Easy to manage. And much like any combat scenario I've talked about in the past, once the primary objective is secure, you move on. We fade out. We advance the plot. If the goblin chieftain is slain, the scene ends. Combat ends. The goblins are mopped up by the guardsmen. These are the same principles you would use to make a ball, a banquet, a wedding, a fair, a festival, a gladiatorial arena. The savageness of the crowd in the 2000 movie Gladiator is embodied by the emperor. And those screaming, dirty, hungry-for-violence masses need only be described through a couple of choice attendees. But we'll talk about big set pieces and managing parties in another episode. Thank you for listening to this episode of DM Gives Inspiration. Next week is a mailbag episode. Head over to kyleferguson.com and use the contact link at the bottom of the homepage to send an email for the show. If you like this show, be sure to like, subscribe, share, whatever platform you're using, go ahead and take advantage of their rating system. Music was by Brian Griffith, and I will see you next week with more DM Gives Inspiration. Inspiration.